G'day to all my friends and family and welcome to this episode of Jim's 5am Club. I'm Harbourside down here at Circular Quay and it's uh, the day of mourning, the uh, public holiday for the passing of Queen Elizabeth II. Um, as you can see, the flags on the Harbour Bridge are flying at half mast or half staff, depending on how you want to uh, call it. And I think today will be the last time that those flags fly at half mast uh, in honour of Queen Elizabeth II. Anyway, today I'm going to uh, take you through another book summary and just continue the, tr the tradition of Jim's 5am club where we just uh, go on a bit of a walk and have a bit of a talk and try and pick out some morsels from uh, the various books and book summaries that we come across and today I've got a book entitled Good Vibes, Good Life by an author known as Vex King. I'd imagine that Vex King is a man but these days you can't really tell by a person's name uh, what their gender is or what their sexual preferences is are or anything basically it's a, it's a guessing game and uh, your guess is as good as mine anyway let's see what we can pick out of this book and see what sort of journey it can take us on so the author kicks off the book summary with an observation where they say that self-love is a balance between accepting yourself as you are and knowing that you deserve better and then of course working towards making it better. So self-love is a balance between accepting yourself as you are and while knowing you deserve better and then working towards it. That's a great point um, and something worth contemplating and considering. And then the author goes on to talk about a few other things where they say that a happy life does not necessarily come from a list of possessions or a list of experiences, but really it's an individual thing uh, that uh, is unique to each person and what makes me happy may not necessarily make you happy and vice versa, what makes you happy may not make me happy, may not make me fulfilled. Uh, what makes your parents happy, your brothers, your sisters, your work peers um, and everybody around you. It's a unique thing and each of us have a calling or callings that we must try and identify and to embrace and to live. So the author here tells us that happiness doesn't necessarily come from a list of possessions, but it comes from finding out what fulfills you, what makes you happy, and simply doing more of it and being content with what you've got rather than being unfulfilled and chasing all the things that you don't have. So the first formal point to come from this book is where the author talks about the importance of controlling your emotions um, so that you can manifest your dreams. And uh, at the end of the day, reality is what will make you successful. Um, we attract what we focus on and we need at the same time to be aware, very aware of our limiting beliefs and where possible, the author says here, to change them for a better outcome. The author comes across with a new term, I haven't heard this term before, but it's called the law of vibrations. So what's the law of vibrations? What's the law of vibing? So according to this author, 
the law of vibrations states that your emotions have an effect on your reality. And I remember the other day having a chat with a fellow down here in the city and we're talking about foods and different cultures and ex different experiences. And he, always, he said to me something that resonates with me deeply. And he says, sometimes you can eat a particular dish or a particular food, but depending on how you're feeling will determine um, the experience you have with that meal in terms of how much you enjoy it. So what he's basically saying is what this author is saying, that your feelings, your feelings can impact your reality and, um, and your emotions have a dramatic and a big effect on, on how you experience something. So if you're happy, if you're feeling good, if you're around people that lift you up and, um, and, um, and nourish you, then all the experiences that you're going to have in that company are going to be um, exceptional experiences, is what I'm trying to say. But he says that you really need to believe and you need to deeply believe that you can manifest your future and you can manifest these wonderful parts of your life. And that we're all, to a certain extent, a product of our environment. As um, Jim Rowan would always say, you know, you're the average. You end up becoming the average of the half dozen people you hang around. Uh, which is just like saying that you're a product of your environment and if you're hanging around negative people if you're in a toxic environment then you also are going to have some of that toxicity rub off on you and impact impact your life and when it impacts your life it's going to impact the lives of people that you're in contact with the people in your social orbit in your social circle so it's important to be aware of it and it's important to make sure that it doesn't impact you in a negative way. The author also goes on to say that our body language has a, a big impact on how we feel and how we experience things around us and also how other people experience us. So he talks about the importance of standing tall, sitting straight, smiling and having a productive and, and a welcoming um, body language because as we say it'll impact how you feel but it'll also impact the way others others around you feel because what happens is that you have an ability to influence your emotions your feeling and your ability to activate your feel good hormones that's a real powerful and profound statement that we can actually activate our feel good hormones so if you smile if you're positive if you stand upright and you're basically reciting um, good things in your head then that's going to transpire and to generate a better experience and a better outcome in your day and in your life according to this author but I think we can all agree with this I guess in our lives we you know we have these sorts of experiences and sometimes you wonder you know why is it when I'm in Greece Ritsina tastes so good or Uzo tastes so good whereas if I drink it here in Australia it's not quite the same is it the climate there? I don't think so. Is it the type of um, uh, 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 you know, vessels that you drink it in? I don't think so. Basically, when I'm in Greece, I feel good. And when I feel good, then everything around me um, is experienced at a higher level. When you're feeling bad or when you're in an environment, when you're in a company 
of people who are putting you down or making you feel uncomfortable or competitive, then life isn't as good. So, you know, we can shape the way we feel. Uh, we can shape the experiences by the way we think and the way we um, express ourselves. So this book, as a call to action, is all about helping us identify the things that make us good or make our experiences exceptional and to try and replicate it and do more of it. One of the things that the author talks about here is the importance of being one with nature. I work in the city here, so whenever I get a break, what I always try to do is to come down here harbourside to be by the water's side, to see the ferries come and go, to see the icons of Sydney, the Opera House, the Harbour Bridge, the uh, ocean liners, you know, the water, the light shimmering off the water, because all of these things are an expression of nature and help me feel better and help me um, engage with my environment and make more uh, more better use of my time than just sitting in a cafe um, and just uh, you know counting down the, 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 the minutes. The second point that comes from this book from this author is where he talks about the importance of setting boundaries um, because boundaries can help us cut toxic people out of our lives it can minimize the, the toxicity of our external environment and it allows us to work more on ourselves the author here encourages us and our family members to create rules for ourselves to create rules and boundaries in terms of what is acceptable and what is unacceptable because setting rules is about taking care of ourselves first and believe it or not the author says and re reiterates here that people will respect us more uh, in the long run because people will naturally take advantage of you and exhaust you if you don't have limits if you don't have rules if you don't have the boundaries and the uh, the limits in our lives so once again, the second call to action in this book is to try and establish a set of rules that will enable you to take care of yourself and will enable other people to know what they can and can't do, what they can and can't get away with, and what you will and won't accept in your life. Because what we don't want to do is we don't want our children, our grandchildren, our work peers, our friends, our family, our neighbours taking advantage of us because you give them an inch and the author says here, and we all know this, they will take a mile and as the author reminds us, they will exhaust us. They will run us ragged unless we stop them and alter their, uh, their pattern of uh, engagement and behaviour. And the author here, once again, has a call to action, and I'll just get out of the wind here, and that call to action is to not let others dictate the terms of our lives. We need to live our lives on our own terms. And the way we do this is we need to identify the things that we like, we need to identify the things that we don't like, uh, we need to figure out how we can do more of the things that we like and less of the things that we don't like. And then we just decide to do, that, to do those things and reap the benefits. Because if we don't do these things, if we don't manage our environment, if we don't manage our interactions, our relationships, then we'll end up suffering the consequences is, I guess, a potent and a clear message coming from this author. So the last formal point to come from this book is we need to lear learn to work on ourselves 
uh, and to plant happy seeds in our minds and to enjoy our presence, to enjoy what is going on in our lives rather than to worry about the past, to wallow in our past, which we can't change, or to be anxious about our futures, which may or may not uh, materialize. What we have to understand, and I, I, I've read this a number of times in many other books, is that if we don't manage the way we talk to ourselves or the people that we hang out with, what will happen is things take root in our subconscious. Not only do they take root in our conscience, which we can sometimes clear or gloss over, what's even worse, what's even more dangerous, is when things take root in our subconscious, our subconscious mind, and they can actually torment us 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And it can be something that we can be replaying at the back of your mind over and over and over again. As I said, tormenting us, making us anxious, making us depressed, making us worried. And you don't know, you can't put your finger on what it is because it's happening at the subconscious level. But it's important to understand that these things happen and we need to clear the slate. You know, we need to declutter our minds, our conscious minds and our subconscious minds and not take on too many things. Because taking on too many things in our life can damage us because we've got a number of unfinished projects. We've got a to-do list which is un incomplete and we've got a lot of work in progress happening at the same time that can put pressure on us and have us worrying and being anxious as I said and being uh, uncomfortable and for many people they don't understand what causes it but it's one of those terrible feelings that, uh, that you can have uh, because it's happening at the deep subconscious part of your, 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 your life. So what we need to do, according to this author, is, we, is we, we need to examine our beliefs and to ask ourselves the question, are they helpful or are they unhelpful? You know, our mind is like a garden. You know, you know is our garden flourishing with beautiful, well-kept flowers? Or is it a toxic wasteland? We need to take some time to weed out the bad stuff and to swap it out with some good stuff. So not only do you have to take away or try and remove the things that worry us, but we need to also supplement and complement those things with things that make you feel better. So what the author here is saying is that we need to identify, um, remove and replace the things that trouble us, the negative things in our lives, with beliefs that are empowering to you and make us better, stronger and happier. So uh, a wonderful book. And thank you very much for joining me on this episode of Jim's 5am Club. It's starting to rain again. It's one of those days. It's been raining all night. The, uh, the flags on the bridge, and I'll zoom in on it so you can see it, are at half mast. Oh, I can't, can't quite zoom in for some reason. <laughs> 